Hey folks, welcome to sunny Kona, Hawaii. Homer Ibarra here with GameSpot Broadcasting exclusively the Pokemon World Championships 2012. Join me right now as our Pokemon resident expert, Arthur Halivay. Arthur, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing good. It's beautiful outside here. I You're love some being sun. in Hawaii. A little bit of sun. You look a little red. Just, just a little bit. I'm, br I'm a little browner than usual if you haven't, ex haven't uh, you know, seen me in a while. But you know what? It's all worth it because we are here to crown the champion of the Pokemon World Championships here in Kona, Hawaii. Uh, there's been a lot of action here in the last pre previous it has three days. Been very exciting. Yes. Uh, a bit surprising too. Not not a lot of what I expected to mm -hmm. see, but uh, a lot of the tried and true stuff came through for the top eight. Definitely. So seeing some familiar faces, seeing Ray Rizzo. Ray Rizzo is in the house. And just so you guys know, we will be broadcasting action from the top eight for the VGC. We'll transition after that uh, match is over. After those matches are over, we'll take a look at the top four from the VGC. And then later on today, at around 2.30 uh, Hawaii Standard Time, 5.30 Pacific Time, 8.30 Eastern Time, we'll be coming back and seeing the finals of the TCG. Where the World Championship for the video game and the TCG yes. are going to be crowned there at the end of the day. So Pretty much. Exciting. So without further ado, folks, let's jump right into the match. We got Ray Rizzo versus Junpei Yamamoto, and we're about to jump into that action right now. And uh, they're... Underway, Ray Rizzo already getting started. Already getting started. Obviously, uh, Ray Ray's going for his. He's going for history today, folks. He's he's looking for his third uh, world championship for uh, VGC, which is which is the first person ever for the first person ever world championship. making history. So we're looking at their action right here. Now, uh, let's see. It looks like we got some familiar Pokemon here, right? We, we um, do. We've got some kind of already seen a lot of play Pokemon. We've got Cresselia on both sides of the field here. Yep. Um, really a support Pokemon. Uh, she got some good attacks, but mostly here to help out the heavy hitters on each side of the field, which is going to be Metagross and Rotan. Now we've seen these Pokemon quite often the last couple days. What wh what would you say is the strategy starting out with Cresselia and Metagross? Uh, well, Metagross is, is kind of a choice based upon the metagame, based upon what people are playing today. Um, Garchomp has been a really popular choice, um, strong starting play. Metagross is one of the few high-end Pokemon that is a strong pick against Garchomp. And you, you don't want your Pokemon to be one-hit knocked out starting the match. You want to be able to resist that. So Metagross is a good offensive Pokemon, but has a lot of incidental value because he's strong against what other people are expected to be playing. And just so uh, folks at home know, uh, Ray Rizzo is actually the the player on top. We're looking actually at the feed from uh, his competitor, Junpei Yamamoto. So uh, it looks like Junpei's got a little bit of the, a slight edge right now. A little bit. It's, it's still early. I wouldn't say that it's decided in any way at this point. Um, they're still really setting up. And again, this is a best two of three, unlike a right. lot of the previous championships. So after this game has finished, there'll be another game or possibly two games uh, wherein each of the players is going to be able to know what their opponent's bringing to the table and perhaps make some different choices the second time or third time around. And just so folks at home know, this is definitely uh, the best of two or three. And as, as you talk about it, um, the format is a, a weighted, a weighted, what, what was that, weighted Swiss? Weighted <laughs> right, so, so for those of you who, who haven't played in the tournaments before, uh, in order to get here, in order to get into the top eight, they played a lot of rounds. And it's not single elimination. You know, you could have lost a match, potentially two, before you get cut to these elimination rounds on Sunday. Um, so in order to minimize randomness, make sure you don't just get critical hitted out of the tournament. Uh, you could take at least one match loss. Mr. Rizzo, though, I believe, went undefeated yesterday. Definitely. Uh, a straight 7-0. He is on top of his game, and he knows he's he's got his eye on that title. He is planning to take it home. I mean, he's got the hot hand. You know, we saw that throughout the week. There was a lot of folks um, getting in the getting into the term, tournament via LCQ. But Ray, uh, in true championship form, has pretty much just smoked his competition through today. Um, yeah, and and he's a fan favorite too. I'd say. I mean, yeah. Most of the field here, there's favorites. And then there's the favorite, and right. everybody really is looking forward to seeing Rizzo win. Like, I, I, you know, I think it, it has a lot to do with people wanting to be a part of history too. I mean, take nothing away from the competitors, but you know, it would be cool to see history made today. Absolutely. Um, I mean, even 
even his opponents, you, to some level, you have to think, you know, I'm playing against one of the best players in the game. Yep. And sure, they're known too, but there's there's a certain level where, you know, you had to pick one player that everybody knows their name. And it's, at this point, probably Ray Rizzo. Gotcha. And it's still fairly standard, you know, slow, grindy. They're, both the players are kind of feeling themselves out, feeling out their opponent's actions here, playing for the longer game now rather than just the early KOs. Well, let's talk about who they who they have in their party here. I mean, obviously, uh, Ray Rizzo is starting it off with Cressilia and Metagross, but... Uh... Yeah, so we see, the, see those out there. Rizzo is also bringing Tyranitar, mm -hmm. who is just a heavy hitter. Um... No, no, this, this, this is Ray Rizzo. This is okay. Uh, yeah, double checking the uh, the list here. We've yeah, got yeah, looking here. at our notes here. So we've got Tyranitar. Um, okay. Just basically one of those hits really hard. Hits like a truck. Um, and sometimes that's what you want to do. You want to have a linear strategy. You want to just go into it, planning to attack, and and that's a good starting option for him. And his second Pokemon in his party, Garchomp. Mm -hmm. is another good strong option for that another heavy hitter just swinging in um if it follows it up with Cresselia, who uh as you can see out there is kind of a support you know has has a lot of incidental moves so you want to pair him pair her up with one of the two pokemon to start with He's well it looks like ray rizzo uh metagross is uh on the verge of getting knocked out here and if you if you can hear, there's the crowd there's a lot going a bit wild back yeah, there. Yeah, people are are clapping for the upset. It sounds like, but you know, we're still really early in the match, so we'll see how he uh, how he approaches it. Here we go. And just so the, for the folks at home, if you guys are tuning in, we will be checking your comments. So feel free to chime in, uh, and we will be addressing your comments throughout the the entire broadcast. Whenever we can get to him. Whenever we can get to him, between all the heated action. Now, uh, Arthur, you do have a hashtag people can hit, right? If they want to hit us directly. I do. The hashtag for the various media sites is uh, hashtag Pokey Worlds. P O K E Worlds. And uh, it makes it easier for us to see your comments if you add that into them. So, evening it up, kind of knocking out Roton there, is a strong early play. interesting so here we see see the actual players themselves you know they seem fairly calm from what we can see yeah. neither of them is, is he's not really panicking this. you kind of have to be at this point in the yeah. game if you've been nervous and playing you're not going to get this far yeah. at this point you've <laughs> you got to keep the, your composure yeah the ups and the downs the highs and lows they have been beaten out of you by now and you are just here to play yep at this point, it is there is no time to panic. I mean, there it is the best of best of three. So, yeah, and as we get closer, as we get to game two, we might see a little bit of strain. But um, part of this is is 15 minutes uh, for play instead of some of the earlier events, mm -hmm. which had seven or eight minute timers. Yeah, uh, and we are seeing a lot of players taking advantage of that and thinking a lot more about what moves they're going to be throwing out. Yep. Um, and so the game's been going a bit slower this year around than it had in previous years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think giving players uh, more of an opportunity to not make a hasty mistake yeah. uh, is something we want to see in the game. We want to see talent and dedication and practice rewarded. Absolutely. So let's getting back in on the action here. Ray's, Ray's hanging in there with Metagross. He looks like uh, he's right on the verge of fainting, but... Uh, that's probably going to take him out. That's it, yep. Unless I missed something. Did I did I miss a protect there? I think he did. So let's talk about the Pokemon that came in for Jump High there. So that is the uh, the fan favorite, long term favorite Garchomp, mm -hmm. um, who is one of those big heavy hitters. He just he just took a lot of a lot of damage there. I saw though. He did it's, and. You know, it's it's Garchomp is um, a long-term favorite. He's been 
a presence at a lot of previous competitions, mm -hmm. and he is something that players are prepared for, something that players know to expect, yep. but still something that people are bringing because he's effective. Absolutely. He hits like a truck. Um, Garchomp, so, so both, both the players here have Garchomp on their teams. They've gone a couple different ways on uh, how they've outfitted them. They've got some different items um, and actually some different move choices as well. Interesting. Um, so Rizzo here has chosen to... Oh, Cressilia just just fainted for Ray Rizzo. Let's see who he brings in next. Look at it. He's keeping his cool, though. He doesn't seem like he's really phased by that. Sends in a guard jump. Face on face. So, as I was saying, Rizzo has gone with substitute mm -hmm. on his guard drop, which is an interesting choice here. Um, kind of oh, a he response. subbed him out. He didn't. He didn't. Oh, no, sorry. The the move substitute. Oh, okay. Which is an interesting response here. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's basically sending in a little minion to take your hits for you. Yep. Um, which I think is kind of a mean move because <laughs> you know, big, heavy, fierce Pokemon, and you throw this little, little young minion in there. It's not fair. It's a sad thing to do. All right. Look. What's happening here? All right, that's it. We got... That was just one match. All right, we're going to go check in on the other match on table four. Looks like we got Abel Martin Sands versus Guillermo Castilla Diaz. It looks like uh, that first match between Ray Rizzo and Junpei Yamamoto uh, concluded there. We're going to jump into their second match as they get that set up. But right now we're looking at Abel Martin Sands and Guillermo Castilla Diaz. Arthur, why don't you give them the rundown on who, what, which Pokemon they got out so there? So out here we see uh, Hitmontop and Latios uh, on top, which, again, is one of those heavy hitter with a support Pokemon team. That's a fairly standard thing we've been seeing all day uh, and all day yesterday. Um, and down on the bottom we've got Scizor and Swampert, which are a bit less standard, something that is a, a kind of surprising choices to see. Um, Scizor is something that people talked about being a, a presence here in the event um, leading up to it and we didn't really see that coming out and being a part of it we, we saw a little bit of presence here but not a whole lot and he, he can be a strong choice but it kind of seems like the meta has moved away from him as something to play and Swampert is is a surprising pick here um, again not not a bad choice by any means just one that it did not seem the metagame was going to be accurately predicting this sort of team um, the rest of the, the team he's got underneath there is, is fairly standard. We're seeing he's got Thunderous, which is a very popular pick this mm -hmm. weekend from the, the Black White. Yeah, I saw a lot of Thunderous this week. The Gen 5. Uh, and he's got his own Hitmon top and a Tyranitar, just as heavy hitters himself. So, so it's not that he has departed entirely from kind of the accepted wisdom, mm -hmm. but he is uh, playing a bit of a fancy kind of teched out team. He is He's perhaps hoping that coming at it from a sideways angle, kind of not doing what his opponent expects is going to work well for him. And he's made the top eight, so it's worked well so far. We can see if he keeps it up. We saw a scissor there, you know, being protected. That's, that's standard. Um... Mm -hmm. We're, so again, the the time limit is coming into play here because there's been some talk online leading up to this about protect and people talking about stalling, and we really we think that it's part of the game and it's something that you kind of have to be prepared for. And there have been some people bringing in moves specifically to deal with their opponent's protect, and and but there's a lot of talk about it, and it's something that. Uh, the judges here, the professors have been talking about something that they're going to continue to look at and see if they can improve kind of how uh, they handle it and address some players' concerns. Mm -hmm. So this is a good thing. So it looks like we got, oh, there he goes. 
All right, so Guillermo is the is the player on the bottom here, the cl the set of Pokemon that are closest to you, to us. And it looks like he's uh, what kind of attack is he using against Cresselia right there? So I actually missed it, so I was glad to wait okay. for a second. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So that looks like a bullet punch. Looks like it was pretty effective. Arthur, any comments coming in from uh, our I'm, viewers at, at home? Um, so I'm, I'm trying to take a couple quick picks. Uh, people seem really interested. Um, Surfer. So someone's correcting me here. It looks like it was either Surfer or Waterfall that I missed there. Um, and it looks like Guillermo swapped in another Pokemon there. He did. So, again, when a Pokemon gets knocked out or faints, mm -hmm. um, we have the team coming in so you get to pick another Pokemon you get to choose which one and in a departure from previous years uh -huh. uh, rather than having the Pokemon come in right away as soon as your uh, active Pokemon is knocked out uh, it actually waits until the next set of actions to be subbed in from the bench and this is uh, a change one that why would one welcome. do that so uh, we've had some and previous world championships some unfortunate occurrences um, I remember I'm trying to remember names I know off the top of my head but there was a reflect um, in preparation for a self-destruct and it ended up that a player self-destructed his own Pokemon that had subbed in okay. immediately uh, and there was a lot of public outcry a lot of upset feelings uh, so the change this year has been that rather than sub in right away and in addition to this sort of odd corner cases you don't want Pokemon to take damage before they have a chance to be given a move order right so so this seems like one of the things, again, to minimize randomness and minimize kind of one-hit KO uh, options. And I think it's working well. People seem to be generally in favor of this change. So it's probably something that will stick around for a while. We're taking a look at our competitors there. Guillermo Castilla-Diaz and Abel Martin-Sands. Looks like uh, Guillermo's feeling it a little bit. That's Yeah, that's definitely a nervous face there. And... <laughs> To be fair, there is a lot on the line. Yeah. I mean, despite getting here and playing here and, and being calm for most of it, nervousness can hit anyone at any time. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is the final road for a lot of folks here. So, you know, they're going definitely gunning for that 10 for that 10k, right? Well, so the video game championship um, is actually a little bit smaller prizes than the TCG championship, mm -hmm. but there are still $3,500 on the line for the winner at this top eight. Yep. Um, and an invite to next year's event. Yeah, there's a lot on the line. But keep in mind, you know, everybody who's reached this day won't be going home empty handed. You know, there's there's cash prizes, there's there's merchandise prizes. And, you know, there's the trip to Hawaii. Let's there, not forget yeah, let's that. Let's not forget that. We got some action going on here, though. There's Pokemon fainting all over the place. What's, let's get updated on what's, what's happened here. So... We're switching Scissor out for, well, we're not sure for who yet, but uh, mostly it's just a brawl fest back and forth on Metagross is coming in. Um, Metagross has already been damaged. This Nope, this is, this is a fairly fresh Metagross. He's down a little bit in hit points, but it looks like he's probably going to be able to put this away with Metagross here. A smart choice. Protect is is he's expecting Metagross to hit with one just heavy attack. One and big so heavy hit. Throwing out a protect here basically buys him a turn if it mm -hmm. if it lands, um, which is smart. He he he's on his back feet absolutely. Um, so he's gonna throw out what he can to kind of make his way through this. At this point though, he's just kind of surviving, huh? Kind of hanging out. Just yeah, he's he is he's, <laughs> he's on his last leg. It's or... all but over here. <laughs> Uh, and for those of you who have not played oh, look at that. or have not watched, that was pretty effective. That was that was a, a pretty effective move. It was not very effective. Not very effective. It was not but super but effective. <laughs> it was just it was, effective. It was just effective. Um, for those of you who haven't played uh, on tournament or watched tournament, oh look before, at that! The the connecting message which comes up sometimes yep. is just the DS communications taking a minute to reestablish. And since there are a whole lot of DSs playing the game here today mm -hmm. and a whole lot of communications going on, that will sometimes happen. All right, well, that looks like uh, th that first match just, just closed Finished out. Guillermo, up. I think, took the win on that one, right? Yeah, it looked that way. So. All right, so I think we're going to be heading over to the match be match two of Ray Rizzo and uh, game two in the match? Junpei Yamamoto. Yep, we're, we're uh, they, in game two. They've already two. started, right? And uh, 
Uh, look, we're jumping right into the jumping game. Right in. So this match is way in the like. way. So we, we've looks like switched up who we've got starting Pokemon from the first game out. We've got from Rizzo, Garchomp, and Metagross, and then mm -hmm. we've got a looks like a Metagross and a Salamence on the bottom. And and Ray Rizzo in true form. He's uh, he looks like to be in looks like to be in command. Calm, calm as ice. Yeah. He's got ice water in his veins. Look at him. You can start to see a little bit of tension, a little bit of nervousness on the other side of the table, mm -hmm. which is understandable. You know, it's, it's nerve-wracking to be playing against somebody with that much star power. Definitely. So again, Garchomp is dragon type. So Metagross is you know a good, str uh, good strong choice against a Garchomp attack mm -hmm. is one of the few Pokemon that's viable at this level of play and mm, strong against the Dragon-type attacks. You know, it's got the, Im not immunity, but um, it's, you know, half the damage. Mm -hmm. So that, that one hit punch that's going to knock out weaker Pokemon, going to do a whole lot of damage to even, you know, strong, high hit point Pokemon is Jump not gonna going to do a whole lot. To getting the pretty aggressive, going after Cresselia right there. What kind of attack was that? Um, was that a meteor? It looked like a meteor. Form? It looked like that. Was it? Let me and for the check. folks at home, yeah. just looking at the the text on the screen there, don't be mistaken. This truly is the World Championships. I mean, there's uh, what appears to be Japanese on the screen and English up top. Yeah. It, so yeah. each of the players has their own DS here with them, mm -hmm. uh, and each of the players is using their own language. Uh, and this is just a nod that players should be comfortable. We don't want we don't want this decided on a simple language right. misunderstanding. And right. this is the world championships. This is There's the world championships. 18 countries represented here this weekend, I believe, I believe so, yep. People from all around the world. And it's it's great. It's great to see that. Um So yeah, so we've got that was a Draco meteor. Um something that's not going to do a lot of damage to Metagross, so mm -hmm. it looks like the play here is to take out the support and just right. hope to weather the heavy punches from Metagross. Um, but Ray subbed in Cressilia before the, uh, the other Pokemon fainted, right? Or did he, or did that other Pokemon he had out? So I think I think it was Cressilia. No, no. So so I must have missed that. So he started with Garchomp. Yeah, right? he did. So he must have subbed in Cressilia. Uh, again, Garchomp is not super great against Metagross because mm -hmm. a lot of his heavy hitting moves are going to deal less damage to Metagomp. Uh and. Uh, Salamence. So the Salamence, the question there is, the color scheme's different. It looks yeah. like this is actually a shiny Salamence. Okay. Um, and shiny Pokemon, one in 8,000, I believe 8,074, maybe 8,674, one in a whole lot chance of catching a shiny Pokemon just out and about. So uh, a shiny uh, Salamence, a mm -hmm. shiny Pokemon of this level, is kind of a prize. It looks like it's something he might be showing off on the world stage something that he's getting a great opportunity to kind sure. of brag a little bit about. Put it on display if you got it. So it looks like Jumpe br brought in the little Garchomp too. So at this point, it looks still like it's really anyone's game. There's yeah, no it's pretty clear, even at this point. Although, oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that was pretty having, super Having effective. said that, <laughs> looks like they may have been a critical hit. It was, it was definitely critical. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, with any hope here, uh, we're going to try to take out Cresselia and even up the number of active Pokemon, but it looks like Rizzo is in a lead again at this point, and it yep. looks like that might be the turning point for the match. Rizzo might be able to take it down at this point. Just a clean sweep. Yeah, uh, this is Tyranitar coming in, um, which is, again, just another attempt to throw heavy punches at things. Tyranitar is a, a heavy hitter that's uh, rock dark type, not dragon type, so he's actually able to deal a lot of damage to Metagross, able to just put out the punches over and over and over again. Um, hopefully, looks it looks like that's the hope here, is to try to hope, you know, live long enough to punch, mm -hmm. you know, knock out the opponent's Pokemon. Uh, it does not look like it's something that's going to be likely. <laughs> So that's a protect from, uh, hope to keep Garchomp off some damage here. And a protect from Tyranitar as well. So in, so in either case, this is probably going to negate 
uh, the moves from Rizzo's side of the field, mm -hmm. unless Rizzo has seen this coming um, and is able to, you know, predict it, attack it directly. What would be something that, uh, if you if you were anticipating that, what would, what would Rizzo's tactic be now? So there, there are a couple options. And what he can do is, if he assumes his opponent's protecting this turn, he can take this opportunity to kind of pump his own team. Okay. Uh, moves that would, like, faint room or uh, false room, uh, which changes the order of the battle, um, or, a, you know, a weather condition. That sort of thing is something you want to do in response to a protect, if you are sure it's coming. Because basically what it does is it takes your opponent's action and it costs them that turn. If you, if you attack, you each spend an action, you're back where you started from. It uh, looks like Cressilia uh, was taken down Out there. of here? No. Um, but another opportunity, there are some moves you can play that will get around to protect. Mm -hmm. And so you can still deal damage through a protected Pokemon. You just have to know it's coming. Metagross took a bunch of damage right there. Me Metagross is... He's still fine. You know, he's he's all right. still got a punch or two left inside him. Oh, look at that. And that was like an earthquake, I think. Um, and so, yeah, Rizzo is still in very good shape here. I think I think Rizzo's taking a a, a commanding uh, lead in this match, right? He's he's definitely got a lead. I'm not sure how commanding it is, but he is in a very strong position at this point. So we got Metagross and Garchomps on both sides. Both sides. Here. And this is interesting because in each case, the Garchomps are probably going to be going against each other because they're not going to be able to do much to the Metagrosses. The right. Metagrosses are probably going to be going against each other. So uh, Rizzo's a little bit ahead on the hit points. Um, you know, absent a lucky critical um, or a huge upset here. I think Rizzo's got this pretty close to one. Yeah, I think it, at this point, it's just a matter of time, right? Right. And, and there, there's still possible upsets. I mean, you can see a lucky critical. You can see that bar go from mostly full to entirely empty with one, you know, perfect play and a little bit of luck thrown in. What kind of attack would, would, would deliver a critical in this situation? Well, so any attack can actually deal a critical. A critical mm -hmm. is double normal damage. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly for things that are... Pardon the, the cheering in the back, obviously something good going on. Uh, for attacks that are already effective against the Pokemon type, something like a, an effective attack followed by a critical on that one attack is going to deal four times normal damage. And that's enough to take out any Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, absent, you know, the, the... Oh, look at that. ...moves like Protect or something. So we're down one of the two. And again, this is Rizzo just trading punches just back and forth. Hammering and away. He is pretty much going to win this match, it looks like, at this point. Um, oh yeah, so any any move can be a critical, and that doubles normal damage. Uh, some moves, some moves are likelier to be criticals. Um, those are actually specified in the special mechanics. You know, twice as likely, three times as likely to score a critical hit. Uh, these moves generally have a lower normal power, and so it's a trade-off. Generally, not a lot of those seeing play at this level because you want things to be consistent rather than lucky. You want things to deal a lot of damage on average rather than an okay amount of damage and oh, an occasional a, critical. It looks like there's a little bit of an upset there. Jump A took a... a looks like he got a little there's lucky. There's some excitement right there. Ray seems a little stunned as if he didn't... He wasn't expecting what, what just happened here, so... That was that was a bit of an upset. So that like was I said... definitely an upset. You're, Jump you're A is see, feeling it right now. Look at that guy. You're going to see great play at this level, and sometimes luck will play a factor. So it looks like that battle, that's, uh, that's, now we're tied at one to one. Now. One to one. So they're yeah. going to be going to the third match. And again, the third and final match. We could potentially see upset right we now. We could. We could see Ray Rizzo going <laughs> home after this, which would, that would be, a huge that would spread. not be, um, yeah, that's, that's going <laughs> to cause some hurt feelings among a lot of the audience. Well, we'll see if, uh, you know, it's going to be history either way, whether he goes home or stays. And uh, Even even making top eight is very impressive. And, yeah. I mean, he's, he's going for the third win in a row, but mm -hmm. you have to congratulate him for doing this well already. Yep. He has played seven rounds and not dropped a match so far yep. just to get to this spot. So yep. that's and an amazing just, run. It just goes to show the depth of the talent here at right. the Worlds. I mean, there's, you know, whether you're a, a top seed or you came in through winning nationals or you just... Qualified via LCQ. Ground your way out, right. It's, any, it's anyone's game. 
Um, and look, there's some more action this, from the yeah, show floor. Yeah, this is the top quality in the world. So. We, <laughs> we see the swimsuit and nothing <laughs> else in there. We are, in fact, in Hawaii. Um, yeah, and so again, they're going to game three, and between each game in this match, mm -hmm. the players have an opportunity to switch up which Pokemon they're starting with and which four they'll be bringing to battle this time. So we're going to see which Pokemon, whether or not Rizzo or his opponent, want to bring a different choice to start with. So if you were Ray Rizzo, and you just lost the, the first match of your week going well, into a historic 3 -peat. Well, I think, I think he's lost a couple games. I think round five and round six yesterday, he was one game lost two games one mm -hmm. so he's still he is, isn't unexpected and right. so he's going to be able to handle it so what would you say would be would what would be his what would play be your here? first what would be your first pick to change it up make sure that you don't go home so he's he, he's bringing metagross because it's a counter pick it's something that he wants to see against his opponents uh guard chomp and some other choices there i, I think metagross is going to show up again i think probably going to keep the same team as game two mm -hmm. um it looked like he was doing well it looked like he had the game pretty well sewn up, and he was in a leading position, and then it just, he couldn't quite close the he deal. Couldn't, he couldn't finish it. Which happens sometimes, but you know, given that same situation again, mm -hmm. uh, he'll probably be able to take it home. So I would not expect to see any real changes from Rizzo here. I expect to see the same. Oh, look at that. Switched it up a little bit. Yeah. So we've got the Hydreigon and the Garchomp. Um, Hydreigon, I think, is one of his starters. I think he was, you know, Hmm. It's interesting. So we've got a sandstorm here. Okay. Um, sandstorm is one of the weather conditions. It means that Pokemon have been taking some damage at the end of each of their attacks. It's not a lot of damage. It's uh, I believe one sixteenth of their health, but it adds up. Yeah. It's every little bit helps, and particularly for um, heavy hitters like Garchomp, if you're hoping to knock someone out in one hit or come close to it, that one sixteenth can be enough to put away a Pokemon. They're kind of uh, adjusting to their opponent's choices, mm -hmm. um, figuring out how they want to progress from here, seeing what their opponents have taken out to start with. Um, and it is it is a not rock, paper, scissors, but that sort of feeling with tons more choices. It really is, if my opponent does A, I want to do B. But if my opponent does B, I want to do C. Right. If I my opponent does B and I do A, that's bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take some hits here, and it's not going to be good. And we can see here that Rizzo is going to be switching out Garchomp for a Metagross. It's kind of giving him a different look here. Look at that. Uh, and so he's, he's losing kind of the tempo advantage. He is mm -hmm. losing the opportunity to take an attack to start with. But it's not a huge loss because that attack probably would not have done a lot of good based upon what his opponent has started out with. Right. So it looks like Rizzo kind of got out bluffed here to start the uh, start the game. So he's kind of starting a little more defensively then. Right. So he's, he's hoping to weather this first uh, set of attacks or two and then come on strong on the counterattack. And so Metagross is taking some damage here. Uh, and they use Protect from the Hydreigon. So Hydreigon's not going to be um, taking damage from this, I expect. Oh, he took a little bit of damage. So we've got. So if you're Ray Rizzo right now, you're facing. You could be possibly facing elimination. How, how much do you think? It, uh, you know, this this matches in his head a little bit. You know, at this point, I think a little bit. I think it's a lot harder to come back from. And, I, and when I say luck, I don't mean that it's only luck. It's, he's his opponent's obviously playing a perfect game. Yeah. Playing at the top the game tier of his life, of them, right? Much. Top tier of play. Um, he is amazing, making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. He is putting himself in a position where. He needs the cards to fall his way to win. Right. And it's not just that anybody could do this. Absolutely not. He has to find the one route to get there, and he found it, and he went that way. But despite that, that route's not going to get there without a little bit of luck on his side. Yep. And that's the worst feeling to face down, to know that your opponent's playing well. Wow. But even when your opponent's playing well, it's not necessarily going to get there. Cressilia just, took, it a, does. just took a big... Uh, took a beating. It's taking it's a beat. Not, oh, okay. Not unheard of. Uh, they're not quite as sturdy. She's kind of support Pokemon designed to help out the heavy hitter there. Yep. Uh, and as you saw, he was expecting to hit, so he had, he had the recover there for uh, some hit points back up. She's still a little bit down, but again, not nearly what it would have been Ooh, had he not responded. Critical. Looks like a critical, and that is going to take out the Tyranitar. Um, this puts Rizzo in good shape. Yeah. Again. He's got to feel he's got to feel good about after that. Yeah. I mean, you know. And this this is the thing. The the luck goes both ways. Yep. You, you lose to a critical. You get a critical and take somebody out. 
and that's part of the game. And that's that's part of why we're doing two, three, two out of three today instead yeah. of the one shots, and something that people are really liking because that sort of uh, experience is exciting and fun, and you know you like seeing that as spectators. It's something that's really exciting, and it's something that you don't want two or three criticals in a row to mm -hmm. decide the world champion. Right. So it's it's a delicate balancing act, and they're doing a good job. Let's let's take a look at some comments. We got any anybody chiming in here? Take a quick look, see what people think. We've got we've got some people who think that theory is boring. We should focus more on the match, <laughs> which is fair, because uh, this is an exciting match. It, it is, is a, this is a good on. match. So we saw Metagross come in um, for Tyranitar. Just again, as a heavy hitter. Um, doesn't look like it's going to do that much good. Metagross on Metagross, you know, you're punching back and forth, and Rizzo's already down some health comparatively, but he's up a Pokemon, uh, and that's that's probably going to make all the difference here. And again, for anybody who wants to get in contact us with direct with us directly, hashtag PokeWorlds, and we'll get. Uh, we'll definitely get a chance to try to read your comment on the air. So that's that was a uh, good call there. He took out a Cresselia, so now we're we're down to three on each side. This earthquake is going to be critical here. It's going to see how much he's going to knock down. Ooh, it's going to knock down a lot. Super effective. Um, so this is this is again Rizzo in a good spot here. That is what we wanted to see. We'll have a little bit more information about these guys' parties and you know the items they've chosen, how they've leveled them up at points throughout the day. Um, the uh, match for today is, as you can see, two on two. Um, each Pokemon gets their move set, which they get to pick, they get to choose, mm -hmm. they get to level up, and that leveling up has some choices involved. You can focus on hit points or attack. Um, you can also focus on what moves you want the uh, Pokemon to know and. While we're seeing a lot of the same Pokemon, we're seeing Metagross and Garchomp, uh, we're seeing some differences in how they've been evolved. So we're seeing players with different decisions on what moves to bring, um, different decisions on whether to focus on hit points or whether to focus on strictly offense. Um, and we're seeing some changes and differences on what items people are bringing. Uh, each of these Pokemon have one item they can bring, and it's no duplicate items across the parties. So not just what items you choose, but where you put them in your team. Um, are being, you know, that's that's a big part of the matchups here in the competition mm -hmm. that is not immediately apparent because a lot of these items are in case of emergency items. Um, you want to, if you want to dodge confusion, you can throw a berry on there and it'll be great. You'll be able to dodge that attack, you know, that idea. But if your opponent isn't on that plan, then you've, I wouldn't say wasted an attack, uh, wasted an item slot, but you have kind of, not optimized so there's a balancing act between going all out one plan and kind of expecting your opponent and mind gaming them and mind games are a large part of the game at this level do you do you think jump has gotten into ray's head a little bit now uh, we I saw that shot earlier he looked a, he didn't look as confident as he did when he started uh, i would say definitely and at this point it's game three so game one's obviously going to be less nerve-wracking than game three because you know either way you're gonna have at least one more game, and even if you lose, you're gonna have two games to pull it around. Right. Um, everybody, everybody hopes that they're gonna be able to, you know, perform when it comes down to it. Game three, this is it. Somebody you, goes home. You're not gonna get another <laughs> shot after this. So, both players are gonna be feeling the and tension this, here. This one's about. This one's pretty even right now at this point, right? Yeah, it's it's evening it up. You know, we've we've got a strong comeback, but I'd say Rizzo is still a little bit ahead here. Um. Remember, we've got we've got Metacross on Rizzo's side, which is a very strong Pokemon to be out when his opponent's forced to have Garnchomp on the attack. So you see, you oh, see. There we go again. Metagross is not taking a lot of the attacks because uh, he's not going to be taking as much damage as Rizzo's. Oh, it well, looks like that, Rizzo's Garchomp is that out. That looks like that may have been a lucky shot there. Um, good, good choice on where to attack, and it definitely paid off for him. 
Yeah, I think needless to say, Jumpe is having the game of his life right he, now. He, you saw how excited he was. <laughs> he cannot contain himself. Let's see how Ray can recover here. So it's kind of a decision here whether or not Ray wants to take this opportunity to kind of regroup, um, hope that his opponent's going to make some mistakes, or whether or not he just wants to race at this point. Um, and were I in his position, I think racing is still the right play. I think given the status here, just all out attack, he's going to get there faster than his opponent. But might not be the case. There might be some tricks from Junpei. It might might go a different way. So, And I again, he's, he's the master here. He knows what he's doing. So it'd be interesting to see what he's decided on. It looks like we've got some decisions inputted and we're switching out Salamance 4 for the Metagross. And the Metagross is back. So Metagross is he's kind of on his last on, legs, yep. Right, but uh, it looks like the hope here is that um, we're going to take the attempt uh, to take out Garchomp. Uh, and which gives Metagross a chance to take one shot. Looks like Metagross is going to try to take down the uh, Hydreigon here. Ooh. I might not get a chance to nope. do so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to get a chance. Metagross there. is it. That, he's, he's, he's done. Uh, the, the potential for upset here is, is dropping is <laughs> as, as time goes on. It's still there, but... You know, every every uh, back and forth we go here, where something unexpected does not happen, yep. is more more chance for Rizzo to yeah, just seal it up. I think Lady Luck may have uh, may have knocked well, that, on Jumpy's door. Yeah. That was a bit of a gamble there. Yeah, um, didn't quite pay off as well as he may have hoped. Yep. So Junpei, we, we, we both get that Junpei is so excited. Be I'm sorry for the noise from behind here. Junpei is so very, very excited because he was in a, not not a terrible position, but certainly not a great position in game two. Uh, yep. And there was a lucky shot or two, yep. uh, an unexpected bit, and he made it to game three. So even though Rizzo looks like he's going to seal this up here, um, Rizzo's got to be... Oh, no, sorry, uh, Junpei has to be very, very excited here for making it to Game 3 at the very least in a matchup where he looks like the not-the-favored party, both not just as players, but also... Oh, um, I, I think that's it. That's, uh, that just a look is on Junpei, Junpei's not a face happy says look. it all. Looks like his luck may have run out. I don't know if you can hear on the feed the chanting and uh, applause from back here. That's, could be it. That's, <laughs> That's yeah. Yep. So the audience is excited. We're a bit excited, but <laughs> uh, at this point, I think I might be comfortable calling it. It looks like Rizzo is going to win uh, yeah, this I think Rizzo to the is, top four. Is, uh, he dodged the bullet here. But in true form, he is going to advance, pending any any more luck. But right. So I this is what I was fun. talking about the two of three format for this weekend. Like, had had game two been the starting game, yeah, um, you would have seen an upset, and you would have seen perhaps some hurt feelings in the audience, perhaps some hurt feelings from the players. It's still a great match. Still, they're gonna play their best and do an amazing job in each case. But. Right. That's you know to a certain point we don't want the world champions dis world championships decided on that much yeah. of a lucky shot, um, and plus it gives this great opportunity for the players to kind of switch up their strategies in between g games two and games three. So, all right, I think this might be it. That eh, I'm not sure that's going to do quite enough. Right, Boom. I was wrong. Yep, that looks all like right. it's it. So it looks like Rizzo is going to be advancing to the quarterfinals here. All right, Ray Rizzo moving on to the top four. Jumpe, keeping the dream alive. Gallant, gallant effort, but you know, taking a minute to collect himself. Yep. And that's that's really tough because you know that's the point where this this right here is a moment where you're not you realize you're not going to be world champion this year. Yep. Uh, he's probably going to make it back next year, but that is a heartbreaker. Definitely. Well, you know, I mean, for for someone like Ray. 
it's got to be a wake up call a little bit just to be like hey you know what i can't i can't wrestle my laurels here right there's and there's a lot of luck that that could take me down you know that i think that second match kind of illustrated that he he was in command for a little while and then a couple of things fell the wrong way a couple and yeah games down and particularly now you know yesterday he went undefeated right um and now there's no wriggle room. Yesterday, nope. had he lost one of his matches? It's, it's win or go home. Right. He, he could still lose a match yesterday and make it to the top cut, still be playing for world championship. But now, the, the ante's upped. He cannot lose nope. a match. That's uh, it. And so he, he lost his chance for, you know, getting past their right. luck yesterday. He's, he's on a razor's edge for the rest yeah, of the exactly. day. Yeah, exactly. There's and no there's room for mistakes now at this only point. Only two more matches. Yep. Um, and top four is a very impressive feat, even if he doesn't make there. But I think everyone's still hoping that he is going to be the champion here today. And it looks like it looks like he's brought a good team. It looks like his head's in the game. Uh, he could have certainly started making mistakes after that unlucky call, and he didn't. He, he kept, kept playing composure. at the top of his yeah. game, so he's doing good. He didn't panic. Uh, I'm I'm still excited to see him take down the top four. I think he's on our uh, list for top four coverage, I believe. Definitely. So yep. He's definitely going to be on our list. We'll him. check in later with him when uh, when they switch up the matches. I think uh, I think Are they we still going. I think they're still going. There might be that other match going on between Abel Martin Sands and Guillermo. OK, now actually, I just got word that that match is over. And uh, while they transition between the top eight and the top four, Enjoy let's uh, let's take some comments. Maybe let's see what's anybody? going on with folks um you brought up an interesting point i think at the top of the week is you know obviously uh pokemon world championships here in in, in kona hawaii it's a big deal it is know? it and, is a very big deal you know some some families are here are are here because their child or their you know significant other made it into the, right. the world championship um, so let's let's talk about the validity of whether you know of this sport and where it's headed and sports a good word for it it really is a sport and there's a lot of uh talk you know among the community and whether or not it should be a sport whether yep. or not it's legitimate authentic a mm -hmm. real thing and it is and there's this movement towards games to be recognized as sports starcraft is a great example mm -hmm. starcraft is to many people's minds a sport i feel that way i feel it takes dedication sure. takes hard work and takes a lot of talent yeah you, not only talent but it takes a lot of hard work you know right. i mean you have to study and you have to uh, you have to know what's going on with with uh, the Pokemon and the different types of parties you can play, the different uh, how you select your deck, all that stuff. I mean, there's a lot of strategy. I mean, I'm I'm probably case in point. I had, I didn't know half of what I'm talking about now <laughs> before I got here, but you there's, know, there's a lot to it. You can jump in and get over your head. There is there is so much that there is to know and to learn about this you know environment. And the players at the top of their game, they know most of it, but they even you know, you could ask them. They'll say, sure, there's an opportunity for us to get caught off guard by something we don't know. Yep. That is absolutely something where there, there's experts, but there's no one that's perfect at the game. Right. Um, and there's, there's tons of work, hours and hours of play. People who warmed up for this sort of thing, they were talking, you know, we were spending five, six hours a day, every day for a month leading up to this. There is dedication. Yep. Um, so it's, it's absolutely valid. Um, and it's also it's also timing too. You know, I we were talking with a lot of the folks here that are in the competition that actually got in because of LCQ, and that are kind of tearing it up. And the people that you would expect to be favorites are kind of falling by the wayside because you know if you have the hot hand or if you've gone right. cold, and, not, and you're not on top of your game, you could get caught. So for those of you who don't realize, uh, the LCQ system is the last chance players have to qualify for the event, and that takes place the day before World. So it's Friday here in Kona. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to fly yourself out to Kona. Right, for take a one chance. last chance. You can do it. <laughs> and the top four players uh, for the card game, top two players for each of the divisions for the video game, get to play in the world championship. And do we do we actually have some of those folks here in the top uh, eight? That are I I am not sure. We can check in and see which of these were LCQ qualifiers. Mm -hmm. I know some of the card game LCQ qualifiers are in the top cut. Right. So they came out because they knew they were running hot. They wanted to win. They won the LCQ. They made their way to the elimination rounds for the uh, card game. And with any luck, they'll make world champion. Right. Because they took that one last shot and they were running hot. But according to uh, some of the folks here, I don't think any LCQ uh, qualifier has actually won a championship. Am I, am I uh, right? To the best of my knowledge, no. I think to a certain point, you know, they'll they'll upset, they'll knock some favorites out, and they're they're very impressive, very talented players. Um, and I, I'd hesitate to say that they're not 
quite as good as yeah. the name players. Sure. But in many cases, it's the name players have spent so many more hours practicing and have a better support base and have just more immersed in the game than the LCQ. It's, it's if you're going to spend all that time prepping for the game and playing in competitions, um, you have a lot of opportunities to qualify beforehand. So LCQ players are very, very impressive. And a lot of times you'll see names that did not quite get there at a national competition mm -hmm. um, come play in the LCQ because they'll think they'll make it and they'll make it in. But a lot of times you'll see LCQ players uh, reaching the top tiers but not quite making world championship, which is fine because top tiers, they're going to give them an opportunity to come back next year. Um, you're going to play in the next world championships and they're no longer an LCQ qualifier. They're, they can come in, they can relax Thursday beforehand, they can prep for the main event, they're a little bit less stressed, and that's that's gotta be part of it too. They gotta be helped by the fact that they have a day off once they get here to kind of warm up and get ready for the main competition. Right. Because All right, so I think uh, we're gonna be jumping into some action for the top four, and we're gonna be looking at the match between uh, Guillermo Castillo-Diaz and uh, the Wolf. The Wolf. The Wolf is a is a is a there was a fan favorite, he right? Is, yeah, he people definitely know who he is. He actually had a, I think an interview last night mm -hmm. uh, talking about how well he's done, what he's aiming to do online. Mm -hmm. um, he he is he's absolutely part of Team a fan Swag, favorite. right? Is that I I have heard Team Swag thrown about. Team Swag has been kind of uh, you know swagging around here in Kona. <laughs> it's it's a name. It's, <laughs> you got to own those names, team names. Uh, yeah, it's, and it seems like there's a lot of people on Team Swag. It seems that it's good that they're putting together kind of a community. Community is a big thing for winning this sort of thing because you need not just practice against anyone. You need practice against the top tiers of the game. You need right. people that play at this level mm -hmm. to warm up against because playing against a new player isn't going to give you the same sort of experience. It's not going to give you the edge. Right. So uh, team kind of the forming of teams is a big thing, and it, it looks good for U.S. performance coming up to have such a big, such a dedicated group of people on a team. All right, so it looks like we're going to jump into the match between, I, I was corrected, it's Ray Rizzo versus Joe Wachowski, the Wolf. So it looks like uh, we're still getting uh, set to, to jump into that game. But so we've got a, a question from Sir Apathetic. Sure. Uh, what are EV spreads? What is the logic behind Psychic being weak against bug type attacks? Uh, and why is it that fighting type attack can destroy seal? Um, so the part of this is, to a certain extent, the game the game has to represent a real world, but to a certain extent, it doesn't. Um, they want balance, and they want nothing to be indestructible. They want nothing to be the absolute best choice. So, like I was saying, it's kind of a rock paper scissors choice. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are more than three options, you want. A to be strong against B, B to be strong against C, C to be strong against D. And while the names don't always represent what it could be, so he, he brought up, why is it that a karate chop can, you can't break a steel bar with a karate chop, why does that move do anything in the game? Uh, and while they are, to a certain extent, representative of real things, they're also abstracted a little bit. Um, karate chop won't break a steel bar unless it's a Pokemon doing it. Pokemon can be really strong. Right, uh, and you know, a metal, a metal Pokemon, a steel Pokemon, isn't a steel bar. It's that's type, and they're affiliated with it. You know, that's kind of what they're like. But it's not a steel bar fighting in the arena. It's that kind of Pokemon. So part of it is, you know, game balance. Part of it is not quite a flavor fit with, you know, the full ABC thing. Um, we, the types is a strong part of the metagame today. Like, we're seeing Metagross. Metagross is seeing a lot of play because he is um, types that are strong against a lot of the Pokemon people are bringing. Um, so it's not just that in the abstract he's good. He's good in the abstract, and he's great when you factor in that he's good against certain opponents. So it, it is a guessing game. It is knowing not just you, what you're playing, but also what everyone else is playing, mm -hmm. and what you expect to see here. And part of that's a guessing game. Yeah. Uh, part of that is if you if you want to take a gamble, if you think you want to go one step beyond, and everyone's going to be playing Metagross, so I'm not going to bother bringing Dragon type Pokemon. It's something you can do. Um, I don't think we've seen any of the top eight get quite that far, mm -hmm. um, but there have certainly been previous competitions where that's the case, where the person who went one step further than everybody else 
had the right idea and just took it down based upon metagame interactions. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, if if Wolf Glick and Ray Rizzo actually make it to the final, we will have the two-time U.S. champ in Wolf Glick going up against the two-time champ, champ Ray Rizzo on the world level. So world level. that is definitely an interesting storyline to follow. The brackets match up that way. That they could can... potentially be a matchup in the finals. So that that would be an exciting matchup. That would be a great. That That's would be a I would great. Love uh, to see. So it looks like we got Wolf Glick versus Guillermo Castilla Diaz and Ray Rizzo versus Joe Polkowski in the top four. Top so four? Interesting. as soon as we get ready for that, as soon as that's ready to uh, to get going underway, we'll, we'll check out that. But let's get back into the prizes here. We talked prizes. about the money, uh, but again, Fame. Fame is definitely a big part of the prizes <laughs> definitely, here. Definitely out for fame, these folks. But there's also, uh, you know, merch that people will be coming home that you can actually only get here at the event, right? Right, so there's some, there's some exclusive for the players swag that you get in your yeah. swag bag when you sign up and there's some cool stuff here um you'll see some of the some of the players wearing the competitor t-shirt yep uh which is everybody who showed up and played into the world championships this weekend gets the 2012 competitor t-shirt um t-shirts are t-shirts but i know i would love to have that sort of swag to wear um for the screen you can get a seager skin um appears on your ds right there underneath that is pikachu with the tiki mask um <laughs> oh Yep, there, there he is, the P, the Pikachu with the tiki mask here. Oh, but it looks like we're look, taking a look at a uh, Ray Rizzo. It looks like they're getting matchup. warmed up. Yep, connecting, kind of getting in. This this is an important part of the game too. I know it doesn't look that way. It looks like they're just sitting there doing nothing. But this is a very nerve wracking thing. Once you get started, once the match starts, you're thinking about the match. You're planning ahead. You've got five or six or seven turns worth of moves, all in your head. Right now, there's nothing there. Yep. They're just waiting, and that is nerve-wracking. <laughs> it's like the slowest loading screen you could possibly right. ever have. And it's not, just a load, like, it's not just a loading screen. You're not beating the game. You're beating someone else, and you're playing for a <laughs> ton of prizes. For a ton of cash. Ton of I mean, cash. not to mention that you know you can either take home cash or uh, for the for the younger folks who younger come folks, in, the form, it's in of the form of a scholarship, scholarship right? right? Okay. Because um, Pokemon does care about education. They do. And they like sending kids to school. They want their their future trainers to be educated, right? Which is good. Yep. All right. Looks so it like, looks we're, like we're about to get started. Here. Ray Rizzo, the handshake versus J Joe Polkowski. And that's something they comment on. Everyone here is being really polite, really sportsmanlike, yeah, which is good to see. There's a, there's a look at Wolf Glick and Guillermo Castilla Diaz. They're getting their match underway there. You see, I think a little bit of nervousness there. We a saw little the bit. Hand shaking. Yeah. But you know, Wolf, I think that's just his style, man. He's, you know, talking to him earlier this week. Seems like he's just really excited to be here, as is everybody. And, um, you know, you can't you can't take away. This is definitely an opportunity. For all these folks to you know showcase their talent showcase well, their skills and not you're in hawaii man right you, you know? <laughs> at worst you came to hawaii yeah at worst you um, swam with some turtles and this is a a gorgeous you know area here the waikaloa village there's yep. a lagoon right out front um which I, I may have swum in a little bit earlier this week um so even even if you're going home now you're going to take a little bit of time here in hawaii and enjoy yourself definitely well we were just looking at joe polkowski's feed right there and uh we're getting started. Yep. We got Joe in blue and Ray Rizzo in red. Again, Ray will be the uh, opponent across the screen. Joe will be the player that's closest closest to us here on the gameplay screen. And we'll see who uh, who Joe pulls out first. So it looks like a Tyranitar and a Salamence. We got these two Americans going head to head here. And depending on the outcome of Wolf Glick versus Guillermo Castilla Diaz, this could be a one, two, three American uh, lineup in the top three. But again, Wolf just, it'll be up to Wolf. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of uh, Pokemon abilities here. Um, and this is, this is important at this level. All those Pokemon abilities starting up are very important because it's, it's incidental effects. It's sometimes small, sometimes medium effects, but they don't take your action. They're things that just happen and you still get your attack for the turn. And at this level, because everything is such a large impact and so many haymakers being thrown instead of jabs, right. that being able to capitalize on that sort of startup 
and just get a little bit extra, you can then ride that all the way to victory if you get lucky. So this is this is a very important thing, and that's why you see so many Pokemon with the Poke abilities that are start of battle or when they sub in instead of kind of the passive effects. How what how how important is speed in in a tournament like this? You said you mentioned you wanted to you wanted to start out throwing some haymakers. So if you're say your Pokemon's a little slow, is that you're is, are you at a disadvantage there? Oh, that's that's a punch right there, isn't it? Um, speed speed is very very important and. Pokemon have six stats, and you can kind of choose which one to level up. Uh, Pokemon with the highest speed is the one that acts first in combat. Yep. Um, and if all the Pokemon are just trading blows back and forth, it, it's not that big a deal sometimes. But sometimes, if the move you're going to take is something that changes the battlefield's effect or mm -hmm. changes your defense or your opponent's offense, then being able to get that off first before your opponent attacks you is going to change how much damage you take. And if you keep doing that, that's going to have a cumulative effect over and over and over again. Right. Um, and at the highest level, if you're doing haymakers back and forth, like the heavy hitters here, Metagross and Tyranitar, punching your opponent and knocking them out, having them faint and sub out, means it's going to cost them their action for the turn. So if you are able to act first with speed and also take out an opponent's Pokemon, that's like getting an entire extra turn to take an action. And that is huge. And that is why speed is such an important deal uh, at this level of play. Well, it looks like the Tyranitar took a huge blow there. Took a super effective attack. And that 207 hit points is a large part of why Tyranitar sees play. Because yeah. in addition to hitting like a truck. Looks like he's bringing in Gastrodon here. Gastrodon's bringing in. He hits like a truck, and he has a lot of hit points. So he's hard to take out in those one-hit KOs. Despite, you know, something dealing almost 200 hit points, he was still fine he was for still there, a yeah. turn. And that's important because you want to be able to attack back. You want to trade blows, not take a blow and then take it again when your next Pokemon subs in. Um, speed is so important that uh, an item that a lot of people were talking about this weekend, and I'm not seeing a lot of people running it, but it's still something that gets talked about, is the Choice Scarf. And the okay. Choice Scarf is their one chosen item for a Pokemon. What it does is it increases your speed uh, by 50%, which is enough to often let you act first in combat. But the trade-off there is you only get to do one move, and that one move is the one in your first spot. So something like Tyranitar, a heavy hitter, if you're okay with him doing nothing but wading into battle, throwing punches left and right, you can give him a choice scarf, and he'll be doing that fast and often before the opponents get a chance to act. But it looks like a lot of the players at the top levels here have decided that they would much rather have the option to choose between three or four strong moves and kind of tailor fit what they're doing to their opponent's choices instead of making a gamble and making a decision before the battle starts. Right. And that's that's what the item is. It's deciding this is I'm going sure. to do this every game. Sure. You might get there for a few, but if you win seventy percent of your matches that way, that's not enough to put you in this top eight cut. Right. So it's it's the sort of thing that is a gamble that it looks like the top eight kind of avoided this this tournament and it seems to be working well. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Guillermo and uh, Ray Rizzo. Oh, no, sorry. That's Wolf. Wolf Glick. They're deep in the action right now. Now we're taking a look at the gameplay from uh, Wolf Glick and Guillermo Castillo-Diaz. I believe Wolf is uh, on top with Cressilia and Thunderous. I believe that's the case. And Thunderous and Tyranitar is what uh, Guillermo's got. And on Thunderous the is there. one of the uh, the new Pokemon from Black White, and something that we're seeing a whole yeah, lot we saw of a this lot weekend. of Thunderous this weekend. Um, it seems to be everyone's kind of choice for um, most likely to be seen on a new Pokemon, right? Um, and something that it seems to be working very well for people, be very effective. Um, there were some concerns going into this. I I've heard some of the community talking about how Black and White is having a huge impact on the metagame, and more than they want to see changing and my personal opinion is uh, an evolving metagame is good because it gives people a chance to see new things uh, kind of mix up their strategies keeps things interesting instead of boring um, not everybody feels that way um, so we have we have a couple of comments here we have let me get this name here we have Luca 202 asking um, about RNG which is something we'll cover a bit Yeah, briefly. you definitely mentioned that earlier. Um, RNG stands for Random Number Generation, and it's uh, a way of modifying how your Pokemon, when they're caught, 
uh, are inherently stronger or weaker. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we won't go into the details, um, but the new generations of machines make it a little bit easier for people to do this. Um, and so, to a certain extent, there's some people saying, oh, that's cheating. And we should probably be clear that that's, that's not cheating. Um, it is playing to win, which is perhaps not the best thing for some people to do. <laughs> but at the, to be clear, at this level of play, it's nothing that you couldn't do other ways. It's right. stuff that you could do by catching Pokemon. Um, it's stuff that you can do by leveling them up. There's, there's no hacking going on here. Right. There's nothing like that. And there is a very robust, very uh, solid group of judges who keep track of this sort of stuff and are helping out and keeping track. And well, that's good. I mean, it just makes them aware. It, it just feels like they're aware of the gray areas that can happen here, especially in competition. But, you know, right. and there, there are, there, there are uh, fail-safes against it. Um, and I talked with a couple judges earlier in the weekend about kind of what they looked like and the verification process. Every Pokemon gets submitted, gets run through the verification. Um, and even when it says, oh, yeah, you could have gotten this, there is a warning that pops up that's uh, likely to be RNG abused. <laughs> um, so while I know, I don't think there there was no disqualifications that I've heard about this weekend. Uh -huh. um, I have seen some conversations taking place. Sure. Uh, and the spirit of sportsmanship, uh, and I've seen some people making some last minute substitutions to their roster because they don't want this sort of thing to be kind of falling on them. So sure. Sportsmanship is a very big thing this weekend, and I am well, all in favor of it. Yeah, that. that's definitely something to be noted. Now, we're looking back here at uh, Ray Rizzo and Joe Polkowski. Looks like Ray is uh, subbing in a... Oh, no. What, what kind of attack was that, uh, That looks like... Well, it was, it was definitely a super attack. effective. So it's something that's going to be good against Excadrill. Um, uh, it looked like perhaps an Inferno? Let's see what ability to do. So that was a flamethrower. That was the move there. Oh, um, Selamenti used a substitute. Wh wh so what did he do there? This down here is the substitute. Okay. Um, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. That's the minion that he throws in to take hits for. Okay. Um, and so what happens is while a substitute's out, uh, Salamence can still come in and make attacks uh -huh. and still deal damage to the opponent. But since he's not right there, he's not going to take damage from the opponent. Gotcha. And what that is is that's kind of a proactive get started before your opponent attacks you way to dodge those one hit KOs um, it's same vein as protect mm -hmm. except instead of it, it doesn't prevent everything but it also doesn't just work for the one turn so it's, it's a decision which one to go with most players are not going to go with two because you really want to save space for those multiple angles of attack sure um, so that's that's his one nod to a defensive mood and uh, move and I think it's working well for him um, I think Rizzo made the same decision with his Garchomp. Yeah, Rizzo gave his Garchomp substitute as well um, instead of a different manner of protection. And that worked well for him going up to the top eight. I didn't see it get used in the top eight match, but he's definitely been using it earlier in this tournament. Um, and uh, people have been impressed with it. Um, it uh, in his top eight match against Junmei, uh, Junmei's Garchomp had chosen Protect over Substitute. Um, and this is more of the mind games and more of kind of getting into guessing what your opponent's going to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you guess that your opponent's going to protect that right turn uh, and you play around it, uh, then you've lost a... Your opponent's lost a huge tempo advantage. But even guessing that your opponent's going to use Substitute, uh, doing something like a heal move the turn your opponent uses Substitute is not as effective as doing it to a protect because your opponent's still getting value later in the tournament from the substitute. So it looks, it's kind of like hedging your bets. Um, it's a more universally helpful and less specifically counter Trump move. So again, I, this is part of the whole philosophy people seem to be playing at this weekend, which is be prepared for anything and kind of address anything instead of going a linear strategy. Gotcha. Now we're looking at... Uh we're looking at Ray. He's looks like he's he subbed in. Uh, he subbed in. Garchomp. Oh no! So it's meteor attack. This is Draco meteor, right? So we saw some earthquake earlier in the match. Um, and earthquake is a very important move at this level, um, and particularly at this format of event because we're two on two here uh, instead of one on one. And earthquake hits everybody on the field. Um, so using an earthquake against the opponent's team is going to hit both of their Pokemon and if you have the types matched up right, going to hit both of their Pokemon for a lot of damage. 
Um, part of the reason we want to use Cresselia or some other levitating Pokemon as your support um, is Earthquake does not affect them right. because levitating Pokemon are immune to the ground, ground attacks. attack. Yep. So yeah, so so their support. There was another one I think is a uh, Latios. I think levitates as well off my head. Um, and I've seen some some Latios being paired up with that kind of earthquake overall ground attack attacks. Uh, Thunderous also has a hits everybody on the field attack. All right, looks like Ray just uh, just finished off his opponent here. Um, and that's a lightning attack, so you can see using a lightning Pokemon paired there in the same sort of idea. So that's game one. All You'll right, into game two. And here's a uh, Wolf and Guillermo going at it. So we're mid match. It looks like we're we're moving towards the end of this. Looks like perhaps there's just Latios on the bottom, and not a very healthy Latios. No, in that. not a very so healthy like Latios. Maybe on its last legs. So well, we're, we're seeing this. We're seeing Thunderous here again. That's that's the one of the big Pokemon from Black White that people are running. And who's that other Pokemon right there? Is that, that uh, a Terrakian? No, that's a Heatran, which is one that I haven't actually seen a lot of this weekend. Hmm. So that's that's surprising. What's so special about the Heatran? Um, well, he is. Let's see how he's specked out here. So Heatran's his his Wolf's uh, fifth fifth spot on his team. So it looks like he's picking him up as kind of a counter pick to opponent's choices. So you're not going to see him game one of the matches, but if he brings something unique to the table, um, like the Fire Steel type is fairly important. We're, we're seeing Metacross earlier being strong against some attacks because of the Steel type. Heatran is also Steel type. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that he's chosen Heatran over Metacross for some second guessing on what types he's going to see while also being strong against the same startup types that Metacross is. Um, yeah, so, and it, it looks like it's been working well for him. He's made top eight with it, so. Definitely. And it looks like he, he's really close to finishing off uh, Guillermo here. Right. And it's actually interesting. Wolf, Wolf with his Heatran has chosen both Protect and Substitute mm -hmm. as skills. So I remember I was saying earlier that most people aren't going to use more than one uh, protective move. They're going to focus on one protective move and then three attacks to be able to attack from multiple angles, choose the right attack for a given thing. In this case, he's chosen Heat Wave and Earth Power, but he's also put Protect and Substitute in. Two, so he's, he's really focused on Heatran sticking around for the long Ooh. haul. Thunderous just got dealt a critical hit. Did he? Did that knock him out? He's I, low I, on I, hit points. I think so. Yeah, that's... Uh, Look at that. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, and so so it's not that Heatran's not popular in general. It's right. just that this weekend we've it's not a, a very lot common. more Metacross than, sure. than Heatran. So that was an interesting turn of events there. He, he, I think he might be the only... Let me take a quick peek through what we have for the top eight matches. parties and now, having double checked it looks like this is the only heat trend in the top eight. Oh wow so a decision that got him to the top eight certainly but um one that the rest of the top eight did not agree with it looks like looks like latios is paralyzed uh yep that latios is paralyzed um for those of you who are only familiar with the card game or perhaps tuning in because you heard about this and you're interested. <laughs> um, to the bottom where you see Ladio's hit points, there's a little symbol to the left of it. The PAR stands for paralyzed. And paralyzed means that um, there's a good chance that when oh, he attempts to do a is. move, he's not going to be able to do anything. Yep, and that's that finishes I think it that's, off. I think that's it for Guillermo. All right, well, Wolf. That was a close match. Yeah, they were definitely. down to one Pokemon. You know, less than half hit points <laughs> yeah. in each case. So Definitely a tight match. Wolf looks like he 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 narrowly escaped that one. That's a nail biter. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a nail biter. Uh, before we get into uh, the other matches, we want to definitely call your attention to the, Some of the cool swag, swag that's here weekend. on the table. We'll be we'll be giving away these items uh, as part of our trivia later in the show. We got we got the uh, Tiki the Mask flagship, Pikachu. To uh, yeah, Tiki Mask Pikachu. We got one unwrapped here, but. Um, 
and a whole host of other stuff. This looks like what a deck box. This is a that's deck a deck box. box. So that's for the card game. Um, Sweet. It's the art on the front is again Pikachu with the tiki mask. Right. And you can only get that here. We got a little got uh, key fob. It looks like luggage, little r yep. luggage ring. With, there. Again, that's exclusive to this event. A hat. A hat, which I think they uh, they ran out of the hat. They oh, sold yeah, through them. Done. Yep. We got some stickers. And we got the. We, we got, got a this. screen cleanser, clean, screen cleaner, cleanser. and then we got this little. Uh, oh, little that's chart cool! Here. On the back, it's got yeah. the efficiencies and weaknesses and strengths chart on the back. Bunch of other stickers, and then we also got the some binder these, uh, for the binder. binder. So, so anyway, we'll be giving away. This comes in a pack. We got three of them, and we'll be giving away these later on in the show for the trivia. So stay tuned. Gives you more incentive to stay and watch. Uh, okay. We're gonna take a look at uh, match number two. Looks like with Ray Rizzo and uh, Guillermo. Uh, again, looks like, you know, Ray is just sticking to his guns here, man. Metacross. Oh, it's a strong. Metacross and uh, Hydreigon. Hydreigon. Uh, it's it's a strong choice, and it's one that he's been starting off with a lot throughout the tournament. Yep. And, I mean, if it got it's him a, this it's, far. It's effective. Right. It's obviously effective. Um, yeah, it's got, it got him this far, so it's going to keep getting him there. The only real reason to make a change is if there's a unexpected uh, pairing on your opponent's side. If there's mm -hmm. something that's going to be very, very strong against that start, you want to sub it out. Yep. Um, and remember that, that even if you make the bluff that, you know, I'm going to do this anyway, I'm going to hope my opponent doesn't make a bad call, uh, then you're not necessarily losing Pokemon. You're just losing that tempo, that first turn's action, because you can always substitute those Pokemon out for something that's a bit stronger against your opponent's openers. Right. So it's, it's not a huge gamble. Um, to start with them, it's just a little bit of a gamble. And then if it works out for you, you're still on your optimum chosen starting. Um, so, you know, he's he's sticking to his guns. It's working for him. And Guillermo's got Roton and Exadrill. Exadrill. Exadrill is, I believe, ground type? Um, Exadrill's on... What have we got? We've got Earthquake, which is one of those important moves, again, in this format, yep. because it's going to hit... Both of the opponent's teams. Um, he's got Protect as his defensive nod. Um, again, Protect, uh, you've seen it be used a couple times. And what it does is it prevents all damage from a large selection of... Uh, thank you, Zach. Zach Levine has pointed out that Exadrill is Steel Ground. Um, I wasn't sure if it was Steel Ground or Dark Ground. Um, protect stops all damage and some effects from a wide variety of moves. So what Protect does is it basically is you buying a spare turn. Um, you want you want to be able to, if you have a status effect on your opponent's Pokemon, Protect lets you get an additional use out of that effect. Mm -hmm. So if it's something like Poison, uh, then that's extra damage. If it's something like Sandstorm or Weather Effect, Protecting for a turn gets you extra damage as well. Um, Protect also lets you- Whoa! Look at that. That was, that that was, was a definitely super effective. Super effective. Well, I, was, I was talking I think, about theory I think Guillermo and I just, didn't quite yeah. pay. I may have missed something. The, yeah, the, the, yeah, Joe's, or I'm sorry, Ray Rizzo's Metagross just fainted. So it was definitely an interesting turn of events. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so protect. Um, and then it it's, works the first time. If you keep using it, it's less and less likely to work. Um, there have been several upsets where a player kind of gambles on protecting in a row. So there's this, there's this uh, community response that tends to be boo if you protect running turns. And then there's some people who think it's fine. So it's, it's one of those contentious points in the competitive environment. Um, two on two protect is way more effective because having one Pokemon protect still lets the other Pokemon attack or revive or do some sort of advancing of the game state um, so protect is something that we're seeing a lot of this weekend and mm -hmm. people are really liking now what is what's going on here with the the battle time and command time can you can you give us uh, so, some information on that the battle time is the 15 minute time limit for any given game within a match so that's okay. 15 minutes for game one game two game three uh, and that is in order to keep the rounds flowing at a good pace in order to make sure that everything gets done um, it usually ends up being at least 10 turns, sometimes as high as 13 or 14 turns, get finished within that time period. Um, and what it is is when that time runs out, this game is over. Okay. So sometimes you won't see a win from all of your opponent's Pokemon being knocked out. Sometimes 
you'll see protects running through, you'll see substitutions, you'll see a lot of small jabs and not knockouts. In which case, if the time runs out, the game is decided based upon... Oh, look at that. Cresselia just still super effective. Super effective. That's that Knocked him out. The one, the one hit KOs. That's the kind of thing. You want to have the right type matchups there where you take out an opponent. Um, so yeah, so if, if time runs out and play, both players still have Pokemon out, then it's decided this game by who has more active Pokemon. And then if you both have the same number of active Pokemon, ones that haven't been knocked out, then it's determined by hit points left mm -hmm. and some other tie-breaking effect. So it's not just a slugfest until one Pokemon, right. one team gets knocked out. It is, in fact, uh, a time to a certain match. extent, a time match. Yep. Um, and players are expected to continue playing at a fair pace. If a judge determines that a player is attempting to abuse the clock by not entering their commands in a timely manner, uh, there can be penalties awarded. And they're not, not in this event so far, but there have been previous events uh, on the pro circuit where players have been asked to leave the event because a judge determined um, that it was stalling. Well, that's, sp well that's speaking of judges, rules. Arthur, you you yourself were once a judge, am I correct? I was. I was uh, not a judge for any World Cup championships. Mm -hmm. um, I did not quite get this far. They did not fly me out to beautiful places <laughs> like Kona, Hawaii. Um, but I was a judge for the game, um, ran some local events, um, more, more of the younger kids than the uh, masters and the seniors divisions here, um, which are a lot more dedicated. But it's, the, the judging is a good, solid community, and there's a lot of support for it. And there's, there's some times when the rules need to be fixed and things go wrong, mm -hmm. and it's great to see that there is such a dedicated and very, very competent staff of judges around this weekend to make sure that everything goes off without a hitch. I mean, and, and not only were you a judge, but you're also a, a professor. A I, professor, you are right. You're a Pokemon professor. Which is, you know, you you, uh, you have to kind of know your you gotta, stuff you know to be a, a professor. Bit, yeah, yeah. How does one go about becoming either a judge and or a professor? So there's actually a, a certification program through the Pokemon webpage, and you can jump on there and take a quick look at it, or you can find a local judge if you have one, a local mm -hmm. professor, and tell them you're interested in helping out the game. Um, I know a lot of people who have friends or family in the game will become judges because mm -hmm. it's a good opportunity to be part of the community, yep. even if you're not interested in or uh, the most talented at playing the game, uh, either the video game or the card game. Um, they're, they're definitely part of the community. Um, they love the environment. They love the game. Um, they just don't play in All this right. manner. They judge instead. Well, it looks like uh, Ray Rizzo just finished him off here. Joe has uh, put forth a gallant effort, but, you know, it's definitely not enough against the two-time world champ. Uh, looks like they're uh, they're finishing up their business here. Now we're taking a look at uh, Guillermo and Wolf. They're still in, looks like, game two of the match. Game two of the match here. So we've got uh, Heatran, Heatran is about down, to be. And Cresselia just got subbed out for a Terra, Terrakion. Terra, yeah. uh, so let's see if we can figure out how we're doing. So that, that was Protect. Um, again, that's the kind of buying a turn, um, making sure that your opponent does not do anything that turn. And it's uh, a common thing when you're subbing out, kind of gives you uh, protection for that turn, mm -hmm. particularly if you want to set up a two Pokemon uh, team, something like Helping Hands or something where the two po Pokemon working together is going to have a greater overall effect than each of them would alone. I've seen a lot of Hitmontop too. What's 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 going on with Hitmontop? The Hitmontop's uh, a fighting Pokemon, um, generally a good all-around beater. Not 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 a focused. Uh, Counterpick for the most Jack parts. of all trades. Jack if you of will. all trades, uh, not all trades, but Jack of Jack of lots of trades. <laughs> numerous um, trades. Uh, and as uh, you know, as the fighting, he's going to be strong against. Uh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, he's going to be strong against some strong common choices this weekend. Weak against others. Um, but yeah, it's, him on top has been very popular. Very. Uh, common thing we've seen this weekend. So what are we seeing? We're it's seeing a pretty close match here so far. Well, looks looks like that may have knocked out him on top there. Oh yep, he's so, done. Which is which is probably why Terry Ken got subbed in. He's he's right. going to be a good choice there. 
Looks like Cressilli just got slapped got, with I, a foot. I think that looked like a, perhaps a low kick or something along that line, which which is not very not effective, very effective. But um, what do, what do we think? There's a uh, how much do we think there might be some taunting going on here? <laughs> you know it's not very effective, yeah. but you do it anyway. Just right. Because. Beyond it, you, again, mind games are a, a large part of the game. You know, you right. kind of have to know. It All right, looks like uh, Guillermo's bringing in Metagross. Metagross, the tried and true Metagross. Uh, it, it seems like Metagross is one of those Pokemon where you can bring him in later to kind of buy a little time, right? He's, right, he's, well, he's a bit of a tank. He's, he's one of those, you know, hard hard to deal a lot of damage to from what people are bringing. Um, and he, he hits really hard. So he's good early, he's good late. Um, yeah, as I said, the uh, most people are on Metacross instead of Heatran for kind of that position in their teams for the top eight. Um, he's popular, a lot of people are running him. I think, I think six of the top eight have him in their party. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe five of the top eight. Let me double check. Looks like Wolf brought in the Executor. Executor. Remember the names. The names are as funny as possible when you <laughs> pronounce them. <laughs> um, so again, this, the the doubles format is anything that attacks both of the opponent's Pokemon at the same right. time, even if it's not quite as powerful does quite as much damage to one pokemon as it would a different move it's going to do overall more damage because you're hitting both of your right. pokemon um, but you still want to have those heavy heavy moves for one pokemon at the end to kind of knock out just clean it up straggler, yep. right and sometimes sometimes you want to focus on taking down one pokemon of a pair like if you start with a support pokemon and a heavy hitter uh they're they're super great together um you want to it's more important to take one of them out to prevent your opponent the synergy there than it is to wear both of them down together. Gotcha. Um, and sometimes also, if you're worried that you know both your Pokemons are on low health, uh, if you do a move like Earthquake that's gonna knock both of them out, it might set up your opponent to bring in two paired Pokemons that work well together. So sometimes, even if your opponent's got a low, two low health Pokemon out, you don't wanna kill them both. You wanna focus on killing one this turn, maybe protect with your other Pokemon, uh, let your opponent sub in one of this team and then take this opportunity to wear that Pokemon down, maybe even knock them out while leaving the Pokemon they have at low health, easy to deal with, not a big concern, to you know prevent that synergy bonus. Avalanche is one of those, you know, moves we're seeing a lot of this weekend. Yep. And is that a double as well? Or? Right. So that that would be dealing both of them here, but there was a protect used last turn, so right. it's not going to affect the executor. And so you, those those bubbles going up and those bubbles going down yeah. are, you know, stat pumps or stat debuffs. Um, there's not a lot of those being seen at the competitive level at this high yeah. because, again, a lot of it's about tempo. Um, but here for the doubles, they're more effective because one Pokemon can use their ability to pump both sides of the team instead of uh, just wasting an entire attack to just pump themselves. Uh, Avalanche is uh, an ice-type move which, you know, is a decision as to what Pokemon we're going to see, what types. So, you know, it's it's a gamble as to what you're going to see, but it's good against fire type. It's good against some other things. And again, for the folks at home watching, uh, if you want to hit us directly, go ahead and hashtag PokeWorlds. We'll be checking all of the uh, social media feeds to take your comments, questions, concerns. Oh, looks like uh, Tyranitar effective. just... Just got fainted. He's done. Sit down, Tyranitar. So that's that's the drain. That's him healing himself while attacking. Uh -huh. um, which is again one of those incidental gain back a little bit of health. But every little bit helps when you're you know that, trying to stop yourself from getting knocked out. We There's see a look at Guillermo's switching there. Yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, that's that's. And his face there, he's still super um, calm. Yeah. Just, just his hand you know right there, yeah. that, that strain, <laughs> that pen sliding. A little bit of a tell. Through. A little bit of a tell. Uh, so someone is, is pointing out to me that Cresselia has Leftovers equipped. Um, leftovers is their item choice. Sorry, Leftovers is their item choice for the 
uh, event, and what it is is it's one sixteenth of their hit points healed every turn. Um, so that's actually where the, the life gain is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and as I, as I said earlier, with stuff like Sandstorm and Weather Effects, one sixteenth does not sound like a lot. But over three or four turns, that's a quarter of your hit points, and that starts adding up to an entire attack. So and it's an, basically an entire turn of not getting hit that you bought by making that item choice. Huh. So how important would you say is, you know, obviously playing defense and, and making sure that you're you're protecting your Pokemon versus actually going for and trying to take out your opponent with super effective or critical hits? Well, there's there's active defense and there's passive defense. Okay. And like I was saying, leftovers you could kind of classify as passive defense. He's using it to great advantage here because um, he's trying to play a longer game, trying to live through attacks and capitalize the once every turn type effect that's mm -hmm. that's a passive defense that's something that you're still attacking while you're using this for your defense and and another way for kind of passive defense is trading your pokemon up to have a higher defense stats mm -hmm. um something like an active defense is something like protect uh, and generally you're only going to use that when you're trying to mind game your opponent so you're expecting uh, a benefit Ooh, from critical this. hit there's a critical hit but you know, I think Guillermo is not just uh, running running out of Pokemon, but he might be actually running out of time as well, as you can see there. That the, the counter's running out of time. Yeah, the counter's going down. We are at 19 seconds now, and Guillermo's got to pretty much go for the hail mary here. Yeah, that's that's the thing, and uh, the, you can see the connecting um, menu does the time does not yep. stop while does the two machines stop. are it's connecting. It's like soccer; it just keeps going. Uh, and I think Wolf has this in the bag. I think, yeah, uh, so if I time runs out here, it. which it looks That's like, it. Um, Wolf's got more active Pokemon, so All right, well, there Wolf. isn't yeah, so there isn't a knockout victory, but Wolf does take it based well, Wolf upon takes the it. time decision. Yep. Yeah. Well, Guillermo, you know, obviously he's a little disappointed. You know, he probably didn't want to go out like that. If, if there is a way to go yeah. out, it's not running out of time. Right. Definitely. But, but uh, sometimes that's how it works. That's, that's the name of the game. So I think that'll do it for Guillermo. Yeah, and talking a little bit more about time, as you said, there's 15 minutes overall, and that's a shared time between each player. Yeah. So it's it's 15 minutes. Usually each player gets about 750, but, you know, sometimes gets eaten into it by the uh, connecting problems. Sometimes, you know, animations still take away from the time. Right. So it's not 15 minutes of decisions. Again, it's between it's just 10 and 13 time. or 14 turns. So it, you can, if, at the highest level and, and, of play. And look at look. There's the showmanship there. There's definitely some good sportsmanship this is what going I was on between about. the sportsmanship two. Sportsmanship is an amazing part of this weekend, and everyone has been a great sport. From definitely. What I've seen. So I think, I think we're going to be seeing a, uh, an all U.S. final, which which is pretty exciting. Yeah. I am all about that. So regardless of the outcome of the actual final match, we'll definitely be seeing uh, U.S. versus U.S. Right. And in so the final. So, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously going to see Ray Rizzo uh, th going for his three-peat. And, uh, and Wolf, who is Wolf, the two-time yeah. U.S. champion. So, uh, so who are we rooting for? You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big underdog dude. So, you know, you Ray Wolf? Rizzo, he's seen his, he's seen his time in, in the spotlight. I, I'd like to see Wolf kind of dethrone him and see what, uh, see what happens there. I think... I think Wolf purely making the finals, from an underdog, purely from an underdog, underdog standpoint. You I know? think making the finals is amazing and yes. a, a wonderful show, and I want to see the three peat. You want to see, see the hat you want trick? To be part of history. Uh, I want, I want Rizzo to take this down. Um, I want, I want to see the party that happens from the audience as soon as that happens. So well, regardless, that's kind of what I'm regardless for. of what happens, you know it's going to be an exciting matchup. As you can hear behind us, there's still some action going on, or uh, you know, definitely some fanfare, cheering, some cheering. A lot of uh, a lot of fans here for our uh, for our soon to be finalists yeah. as we proceed throughout the day. And just so you guys know, we're going to be taking a little bit of a break, but definitely return here at two thirty Hawaii Standard Time, five thirty Pacific, and uh, eight thirty Eastern Time. And we'll be bringing you the finals of TCG first. Right. So we're bringing you the the that's just the finals. So yep. we will be crowning a world champion yes. after that game. Yeah. In a few TCG. hours, there will be a world champion crowned for TCG as well as bringing you the finals between Ray Rizzo and uh, and Wolf. So, yeah, it's exciting. It's quite, quite an exciting come back. day. You should watch some more. We should definitely watch some more. We will be having trivia prizes later on as well. So tune in for your chance to win one of three prize packs here from the Pokemon World Championships 2012 from Kona, Hawaii. But until then, 
Uh, we're going to take a little break, maybe take a look at some of the sights and scenes here in the ballroom. Enjoy some of those, and uh, we'll see you in yeah, we'll be definitely joined by the guest commentator, Chris Shepard, from oh, the Pokemon we, Company. we got him coming. He's going to make it. He will be coming here to commentate over Wonderful. TCG as well as the Video Game Championship. So uh, stick around, folks. Stay tuned as we continue our coverage of the Pokemon World Championships 2012.